Hi, I'm Judy from Judykins. Sometimes I just want to play, but this white piece of paper has me stumped. I have the perfect technique for you on those days when you don't know if you should zig or zag. So I have this blank sheet of paper here that I need to decorate. I usually pull in my watercolors and maybe a little brush here, some ink, and of course my stamp. I started out by applying some of the paint here directly on the paper with this cute little brush and I let that dry completely. Now I want to stamp my image with a really dark color. I'm using an unmounted stamp, which I need to mount, and I'll mount it with the Rubber Stamp Concepts mounting kit. It comes with everything, and you can watch my episode Tweet Tweet to see how I mount the stamps. But one thing I didn't get to talk about was the indexing feature. It comes with an indexing sheet that you can rubber stamp so that you can easily see which images you have stored in this great case. So I'm using this rubber die from Stamp Camp. This is called the Floral Silhouette, and I chose this image because it has some nice solid images and also some fine line details, which is going to add the perfect pattern on my card. I'm inking up my rubber stamp with some violet ink. This is just dye-based ink. I love the fact that I can see easily where I'm placing the ink. Now with this big acrylic handle, I have the suction cup handle which helps me position this right over my piece of paper. One thing I want you to notice is that my rubber stamp is actually just a little bit smaller than my paper. Well, I can turn it perpendicular and press right down and now all of that design is going to hang off the edges of my paper. I just ink this up again and then stamp it just below my first impression. And I don't mind too much if the lines overlap or they don't overlap because I'm going to emboss right over the top of this as my next step. Here is a card that I've embossed and I've used the Swirls and Curls design from Stamp Camp. You notice I embossed it with silver embossing powder and because the Swirls and Curls is a little bit finer detail, I can still see the solid areas from the floral silhouette. Here I want to show you a different technique. I'm using pigment inks, refills, and the brayer. You just apply some of the ink directly onto the paper. Doesn't matter if you have little dots or sometimes little squiggles. Just apply some of the ink and then using this brayer, pull the ink right on the paper. Notice that I'm working in one direction. If I roll back and forth, it tends to blend the colors too much and then you end up with just one color of paint. I'm going to let this dry completely. As you can see, I've stamped this floral design with dark ink. I used a dark brown ink. And on this card, I stamped the antique flourish with white ink. It's the same color background paper with two different patterns on the top and it looks completely different. Now after all that work I did to design this wonderful pattern paper, I'm going to cut it into strips. I'm using this ruler here and I'm going to cut quarter inch strips and also the same for your other two pieces of paper. Now here are my strips all cut up from all three sheets. Sometimes they're a little bit thinner than a quarter of an inch, sometimes they're a little thicker. The quarter of an inch is just a guideline to help you. I'm going to use the Judykins mosaic tape to apply these strips. One thing that I really love about this tape is it's double-sided. It has sticky that's really sticky, but if you put the paper on it, you can still reposition it easily until you really press down on it. The other thing that's great about it is you can tear it, which is so convenient, and you can punch it or emboss it as well. So you take your strip of tape and you have it sticky side up and then start laying your strips down. I just set one strip down right along the edge here 
and add an another color. This one is the purple. Sometimes I want to add a little something different to these strips that's a little more sparkly, like my paper cords here. As you notice, I have it stored on the ribbon organizer from Clip It Up. What's fabulous about this organizer is it's 36 inches long, which allows me to store all different types of ribbons. These little clips are wonderful because I can store little scraps of ribbon and other types of embellishments so I can easily find them. Just Take your cord now and line it up right against the edge and then you can use your scissors to trim it. And you just keep applying the different strips of paper in any pattern that you want until you have a finished piece that looks like this. The next step is to take another strip of tape and I'm using about six inches here. Again, tear it off, and this time I want to peel off the backing of my first piece and lay it down diagonally on the sticky side of this tape. I flip it over, and because I'm on this cutting mat, the tape doesn't stick to the cutting mat. Then. The tape is two inches wide and I can use that as a guideline to cut my little strips off here. And with that paper cord, sometimes you have to cut it a second or a third time. It's nice because I can just flip the mat around, line up along the edge and cut, then flip over the first piece of tape and take the pieces and line it up so it matches. The next one here, flip it over one more time and trim off this edge. And the second edge. So I have my zigzag pattern now. Then I'm going to trim to square this up. And now my piece is almost finished. I just take a black sheet of glossy cardstock and because I have the adhesive on the back here, I can just peel this off. Sometimes it's a little hard to peel up the, the paper here, so I just poke the tip of my pen right in the corner and I carefully pull up and that gives me enough of the paper to grab so I can peel off the backing. Then I just apply that with about an eighth inch margin and then using my ruler, I can trim it. So I have this wonderfully matted piece of art. Now because the black paper is two-sided, it has white on one side and black on the other, sometimes it's kind of handy. It just finishes off the card. If you take a black marker and you run it along the edge, and then this way you don't see the white when you have this attached to your card. The final thing I need to do is add one more layer of tape because this is going to be how I adhere my art onto my card. Again, I just tear off a small strip, apply it right to the back, peel off the backing, and then attach that right onto your card. Just push this down and now it's attached to my card. I'm going to add a couple other embellishments, so let me show you my finished piece. I've added a paper cord here that I've tied in a square knot just to finish off the card. And you can see here is my zigzag pattern. Now on the cover of my book, I have this cute little Patera pendant that I've decorated. If you want to see how I made this, you can watch my episode on Plum and Verdigris. The background paper was brayered with a couple colors of that pigment ink and a little bit of stamping as well. This is a great place to store all the cards that you've been making with the zigzag mosaic technique. 
This has been a ton of fun. Now that my zig is zigging and my zag is zagging, I'm gonna keep playing. I'll see you next time. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this week's project, download the design guide featuring special make-it-your-own bonus tips.